Hello and welcome back everybody to episode 176 of the DanJohnUniversity.com podcast. I'm Dan John. I come here every week and answer your questions. If you have questions, remember, email them to me at podcast at DanJohnUniversity and I'll do my best to answer each and every one. Um, it's, it's an honor to do this and sometimes, like this week, we have really good questions and so uh, it's it's a lot of fun to answer them and Let's get started, because I think the first couple here today, I, th you know, I hate to say it, I think all of them might be really good. Yeah, well, let's go. It's going to be fun. Okay, I got a question from Justin, and he asked a question that's near and dear to my heart. As someone who, unlike yourself, is terrible at keeping records, what do you recommend is kept in training logs, journals, sets, reps, resting heart rate, cardio workouts, goals, using your rules for goals? Do you have a recommended style, format, brand? If not, is it something you might bring out as a book? <laughs> that would be fun, the Dan John Journal book. Um, so I just pulled this one out because it was in my shelf, but this is from 19, well, this is from June of 1990. And what I did in this one is something I always do. I start off every journal, and the first thing I do is I write out what I've just learned in the last few years. Um, it's kind of fun to look back on this one because... Uh, well, it recommends for lifting three days a week. Well, when I lift three days a week, I do really well. Now, when I do easy strength for fat loss with Olympic lifting, we're going to work on that title. Yes, I lift five days a week, but two of the days are very light and very easy. And it's just kind of just greasing my mobility up. And the fact I go immediately and go do mobility right after. Um, I talk about in this one here, there was a book out at the time called Jet Fuel. It was all, I also bought the audio. And basically the author just says shop in the perimeter. And then basically we just call it a clean diet. Just eat, eat foods you have to chop and prepare yourself. You know, don't buy boxes or bags. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, it's funny to read this. I got some uh, a little note down here about overhead squats. Uh, half circle drill. We do those every day with my athletes and rotate up for the throws. I literally yelled that at Emily about 80 times yesterday. Um, and I just write down a bunch of notes. And uh, this is something I find fascinating, okay? Kelly came by, this is when Kelly first showed up. So that's Kelly, I don't even, you know, she, she must be sneaking up on a year in that picture. Oh my gosh, look how cute she is. Uh, she now is the mother of two. Uh, and neither of them is even, I mean, they're, I don't know, 10 and 9, and life happens, man. Uh, I write all kinds of notes in here about different things I'm working on. It's interesting here. Uh, this is when I'm really starting to push the uh, concept of eights, the uh, eight reps. Uh, in that decade, uh, many of the training programs I would use would be sets of eight with a, with a tight one-minute rest. I call it the transformation program. So I like this style. Oh, by the way, there's I got notes from uh, a rotational shot put clinic here. I've got ro uh, notes from uh, uh, when I was at the uh, the, uh, the training Olympic Training Center. All the notes from the lectures they gave us while we we're down there. Um, I've got all kinds of ideas that fail miserably, and all kinds of ideas that work really well, really well. Uh, this this one uh, includes lectures I'm putting together, notes on lectures I'm trying to learn things. Um, two of the people who are throwing with me this day um, are no longer uh, alive, which is just uh, amazing. Um, during the throwing session, the two people I'm throwing with are both no longer with us as that happens. Today I do something a little better. This comes from this. I, this is a school I'm on the advisory board for, Parker University. On the back of my journals now, I always include my pirate map. And pirate maps also in the back of my computer. Also, um, with this one, and this is what I, I'm heading to now. One thing I always recommend is that there's a. You always keep a pen. So there's this little band here that holds the pen. When you go to a bookstore, uh, Barnes & Noble has a ton of them. You buy a journal, but always make sure there's a loop for a pen because you'll notice it. You oh, it, When you're trying to write things down, you got to have a pen nearby. And I know you know this, but you don't until you're like me and you lose it a thousand times. What I also like about this one is that these, they have these little sticky notes in there. 
And what I've done with this one is every time I'm overweight, I, I throw a sticky note in there. And every time I can, uh, an orange sticky note. So I can see, that's kind of not bad. I mean, just by looking, I prob I'm probably overweight, uh, you know, for, my, for where I want to be for weightlifting. I mean, it's six times since September 1st. You know, so that's, you know, once every couple of weeks, uh, you know, I was, uh, by the way, I weighed in over today or what I wanted to be. But, you know, yesterday uh, we had a, a massive breakfast with, this is almost embarrassing as a uh, person to say, uh, a massive breakfast with, uh, we had biscuits and gravy and a whole bunch of other things. So let's just say that wasn't my best work. Um what I do now, uh, this isn't perfect, but uh, well, yeah, let's just go to this one. Okay, so on this side of the paper, I always do my to-do list. Now, if you know my pirate map, one, before I go to bed, I make coffee in the morning, I take my supplements, and I make my to-do list for tomorrow. So my to-do list, by the way, I also have a Google Calendar right there. Uh, but I just write down to remind myself what I got to do tomorrow. Uh, yes, I have a calendar and yes, I have this. And I also do this thing now, my phone's upstairs, but now what I do often is I'll set alarms about an hour before these events so that I have plenty of time to prepare myself. And then on this side, um, I have my, my two number uh, stuff. So on this side, this is my body weight. My goal is to weigh 211. I got a weightlifting, I'm just a few days out from a weightlifting meet there, and I'm weighing 227. Uh, I made, yeah, because I was trying to get down, so I was just trying to really, okay, you're, I was three pounds over, okay, I got to get down three pounds, you know, a uh, kilo and a half. Uh, and then I write down the per, you know, the workout, I did the perfect workout, I did snatches, I did cleaning jerks, um, I did a sauna, and I did a whole bunch of uh, Tim Anderson uh, mobility that day. Uh, on the other side is my financial goal, and uh, I write down any ideas that I've come up with uh, today, for example, I write down that I did Podcast 176, and uh, that just pushes me towards where I want to be when I, uh, who, who, what I want to be and who I want to be. Uh, that's how I do it. Um, I think it's important, you know, I'll write down political events. I'll write down big games, the Rose Bowl, the Super Bowl, the World Cup, the Olympics. I'll write down track meet information. I'll write down, uh, at, hung out with the grandkids. I went to the amusement park. Uh, I'll write down a lot of small things. Um, sometimes what I've noticed is that if you write in a journal every day, you don't have to do that, dear diary, I'm so mad. You don't have to do all those long things. You can just make a few notes to yourself because the dialogue is in there. Um, that that's the way. Um, I don't need a massive conversation with my future self. I can just write down. Here are the seven things that are going on in my life. Um, and last night I found out that another person close to me died. Uh, three people I I know very well have died in the last last eight days. And. Uh, you know, I don't need to say to my future self, hey, it's a tough week. I, I'll, I'll figure that out, you know. So I, I pretty much like to have lists. I like to have workout numbers. Uh, you have a whole bunch of things. I mean, if that's something you want to do, your resting heart rate. Uh, my resting heart rate, I go to the American Red Cross uh, five times a year and give blood. I get my hematocrit, my blood pressure, my resting heart rate, my temperature. Uh, they give you, a, there's a little chart that I can use. Uh, it's online as a tool and I can see where those numbers are moving. I have watched my blood pressure go up in the last few years because of uh, pressure. Uh, but I'm interested in about, uh, it'll be interesting to see that come down soon. Uh, any tool you want to use, anything you want to keep track of, uh, my goals are real clear. I have a financial goal and I have a physical goal. Uh, I don't have a ton of other goals, which probably doesn't say a lot about me. Uh, for me, writing a book a year or two books a year isn't a goal. It's just what I do. Uh, that's actually, we could talk about that, a goal setting course sometimes. Um, yes, my pirate map is to build brick by brick by brick by brick, day by day by day by day, myself to a success in my 
physical goal and my financial goal. And we're just, you know, when you have, a, when you lock together a whole bunch of days together, you, you know, you're going to have the great wall of China. Um, so for me, uh, that I, I, with my pirate map and knowing what my goals are, by the way, which I've already achieved, yay for me, um, most of the time, um, I, I, yeah, it's funny, the goals I have, I don't always hit every month, but I try to, and when I, I, my goal is to get them more and more months in a row kind of thing. So whatever you decide, format or template you decide on is great, but I will tell you this is kind of interesting. It's going to change. Uh, it's going to change because you're going to change. And uh, um, I do like if you can put, you know, tape out some pictures. I got a picture there. I'm, uh, I got a picture right there uh, of my daughter Kelly. And I'm like, let's make sure we tape that into this journal too. That'd be kind of fun, you know, kind of maybe do that. I'll have family photos, pictures of the deceased. I, I, when I go to weightlifting meets, I don't bring my journal. I bring these little index cards that have a, that are that are sticky, okay? And they they peel off, and you, and then I write all my information at the end of a weightlifting meet. I just pull it off and I slap that into my journal, so it's always there. So I'll have my weight, my goals, my plan B. If something bad happens, I always have a plan B. Uh, <laughs> you get to a certain point in life, you need to have plan C also. Uh, and that's what I try to do. So I try to make my journal more than just a bunch of notes. Dear diary, I'm so mad. Uh, I like to have other stuff. Yes, I will occasionally rip out articles and put them in there. I don't do that as much anymore because, frankly, I don't get a chance to rip out articles anymore. Good question. A really good question. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay, we got a question from Russ. I really enjoy playing with loaded carries. My favorite toy is a trap bar, loading it up and walking around my long driveway. What is the philosophy I should consider as I play with length of the walk and heaviness of the bar? I swear I've answered this a million times, but we're gonna answer it again. As the load goes up, the distance goes down, but the breathing increases too. What effect do the ends of the spectrum have on my muscles, grip, cardiovascular? I don't know. Uh, I would like to play with variants, but I'd like to hear your loaded carry philosophy 101 first. Okay. I think in every workout you should do a loaded carry and constantly vary the load and the distance. So, so for you, let's pretend, Russ, that you weigh 225. So tomorrow, load the bar up to 225, um, put cones out 50 yards, 50 meters apart, and see how many loops you can make or lengths you can make either way. And say you do five, okay? Um, the next time you do that, uh, you're going to be sore or tired. Uh, you can maybe drop to 135 and see how far you can go or how fast you can go. Uh, next time, go to 315. I think just doing the trap bar farmer walk is fine, but, you know, get dumbbells and do waiter walks, get dumbbells and do suitcase carries, put on a heavy vest, drag a sled, go up hills, do, do whatever you think you need to do. Constantly vary it and do it without rhyme or reason. Um, you know, I had my athletes one time do just left-sided suitcase carries. I, I don't know why, but the next day they were all sore on the right side. And when we were throwing, they were starting to get some real good feedback about how the, how this part of the body works together. It's just a fun idea, but, uh, so maybe sometimes you just do one side weight or walk, just do one side suitcase carry. Make sure, you know, work out a two later, do the other. But just play around with it and have some fun. Um, you know, for me, my grip does not incre improve, you know, linearly. My grip improves woo, 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 um, because it's so tied into my nervous system. So for me, when I first started loaded carrying, one of the things I noticed the quickest was how my uh, grip improved. But then I looked down and Mike Rosenberg had made me these thick bars. So I was getting double duty. I was doing farmer walks, but with a grip, thick bar grip like this. And that by itself was just eye opening for me, Russ. So if you get one of those thick grips and you put them on, if you can't afford to do anything else, just do that and it'll completely change what you get out of loaded carries. So for the record, with loaded carries, constantly vary the movement, the distance and the load and try to never repeat a workout. Okay, thanks. Okay, Michael, uh, what do you ask? 
Do you think a normal person, normal, can build strength or muscle three times a week and endurance seven to nine hours cycling and running per week around a busy work family life without getting completely exhausted? Is this a question of building up work capacity? No, I think it's a, back, uh, a question of uh, uh, how you want to do this. First, you need buy-in from your family. You need buy-in from your, well, not necessarily your work, but because you know, your work probably wants you to train. But one of the things I would suggest in a situation like this is circle a weekday morning or whenever you can do it on the weekday, one for the long day, and then two other days a week. I would like you to lift weights, and I think easy strength would be a great idea for you because you know you get those easy strength workouts done in 15 minutes, and then bike or run after. So you can do a 45 minute to an hour and a half run, um, you know, two days a week. So I'm just throwing them out, but. Monday, Wednesday, those are the days you go into the, you get your weight workout in and you get that uh, maybe one of the days intervals or one of the days, you know, something else. And on that other day, that Saturday or Sunday morning, however it works out for you, uh, you do the, you wait, you weight lift and then you do the long one. So if you do, let's just say, if you do an hour and a half cardio on Monday, Wednesday, to get you to seven hours, you just need a four hour endurance. I mean, I would split it up. I mean, I would probably, if I were you, bike for three hours and run for one, you know, make yourself a, a biathlon, you know, kind of your own little personal biathlon. Uh, you can certainly do some other options. I'm, I'm just spitballing for you. But my thought on this is this, is the other days of the week, you are working at your work, you are being the parent that you're supposed to be, you're being the spouse you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be the neighbor you're supposed to be, and you take care of business. You're all in those other four days. Um, that's the day you grab your child each. And this is some advice I give to my people in the inner circle. You know, if you have two kids, one night a week you grab, or two nights a week, you grab one of your children and say, we're going for a walk. And all you do is go for a walk. And as you're walking, something's going to come up. It's going to be a new card game. It's going to be a new show. It's going to be a new thing, a new book, a new something, a new problem at school. And then you be the best, you be the best parent friend you can possibly be because you're all in on those four nights a week where you're home, five nights a week. Yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're cleaning, you're cooking, you're chopping, you're, you're who you're supposed to be. Um, those other two nights, those are your nights. And if you chop enough on those other, you know, those nights you're chopping, then they're all fine for food too. Just chop a little extra, you know, spend a little bit more time, you know, add a little bit more of this to that. Yeah. I think you can balance, um, a busy schedule. You, you might not know this, but I work two full-time jobs for almost probably 25 years, you know, an administrator and a professor, a coach and a professor, a, a teacher. And I mean, I did so many silly summer jobs and stuff. And I also was trying to train at the highest levels possible. And in hindsight, I wish I would have just trained three days a week and just did what I was supposed to do the others. But those three days a week, Bye, kids. I'm out of here. I'm training, you know, uh, uh, two, you know, two evenings a week and, you know, a long Saturday morning or something. Um, I don't have no, I have no, I have no regrets. I'm, 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 yeah. yeah, I certainly have regrets with life, but um, balancing my career with my being a dad to Kelly and Lindsay and, you know, Jasper and Lexi and Sirius Black and all my pets has been just joyful. But, you know, when you're there, be there. When you're training, train. And I think you'll be a lot happier. Try to work out uh, a schedule that works for you. Um, I also have an article some, uh, somewhere, uh, I call it the weekend warrior training, where you take two hard days. Saturday and Sunday would be your, you know, uh, maybe all, the power lifts on Saturday, the Olympic lifts on Sunday. And then after the power lifts, you cycle. After the Olympic lifts, you run. 
and then one other day a week you do one exercise and then you maybe one week you do this one week you do that whatever it works out i don't know but if you use your brain you can make this work and then be ready to adapt very quickly all right good question thank you good question we got a question from noah your recommendation for easy strength is to swap movement variations but using either the same muscle groups of movement patterns once the easy gains stop coming so the body can continue to make progress. I, 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 there's more than that, and we'll get to that. I was wondering if there's a minimum period that you have found where the absence of the main movement was long enough that your body was resensitized to it. That way, instead of swapping to a variation of a movement, let's say a conventional deadlift, you could just have a deload week and then switch back for the conventional deadlift. Well, I mean, there's a couple things uh, here. Uh, first, there's I want to build this up. Let's, I want to kind of walk you through this, okay? The first is off, O-F-F. -F. I remember when Carol Cady, she was the American record hole in the discus, told me that I should take six to eight weeks off a year. I remember thinking, you're crazy. I don't, I don't have, I gotta keep working. I don't have the time, I gotta catch up. And I'm talking to the American record holder and I'm dismissing what she told me. Uh, I think off is an important way for a lot of us to, well, and uh, in the physiology of strength, the German scientists prove that this is true. When you take periods off, you know, so here is your strength level, and you go off, you go, your strength level drops. And then we start training. It goes right back to where it was extremely quickly. In fact, the more often you take off, the faster and faster you bounce back up to the same previous levels. So one of the quickest ways to to get strong, I know, is get really strong, take six weeks off, get really strong again, take six weeks off, you know, and of course that would drive me insane. Two, you talk about deloading. Now, most good programs have deloading built in. Uh, Jim Wendler's great 531 program, week four is deloaded. Uh, the original Bigger, Faster, Stronger program was uh, uh, had deloading, and, uh, and then uh, back in 1991, they actually changed it around um, to, and it actually part of my, it was, I actually helped them with that. And I, I don't think what I said and what they did was the same. They had them, they had the athletes doing cleans like sets of four. No one does sets of four on the clean. No one. Yeah. Um, and then the third thing is, let me explain variation in um, easy strength. There's three kinds of variation in easy strength. And this comes from uh, Matabro's work. Um, he's the guy who was famous for putting fractals together. But there's three kinds of variation. And it's mild, wild, and no. So mild variation is what most people need. When you get stuck in the bench press, you slide to the incline bench press. When you get stuck on the front squat, you slide to the back squat. If you got bored with the back squat, you slide to the overhead squat. Um, mm, that's the most common. Um, you were doing three sets of eight, you go to three sets of 10 or five sets of two, just those mild, simple variations. The next is wild. Now, I, I am starting to bodybuild right now because I'm taking the advice of the great lifter, um, Tommy Kono, who recommended very wisely that after a weightlifting meet, you bodybuild. And I never believed in that, and now I'm doing it, and I'm like, what are you thinking, Danny? When I hurt my back back, when I got back from the Middle East, boy, I was a wreck, I was a wreck. But uh, I was recommended to do triathlons because bilateral breathing is good for your back, bicycling is good for your back. Running is not necessarily good for the back, but my thought was, if I'm swimming and biking, I can tough out a 10k or whatever demanded after you know whatever was asked for at the, at the, at the particular triathlon uh, after a year of that and rebuilding my back I went back to throwing and lifting and had the best years of my career <laughs> so that was that's wild variation you go from being an Olympic lifter to a triathlete uh, when I was in high school I'd go from wrestling to discus throwing and hurdling and in the summer, I would play soccer, football, um, and then American football. There was, those are, to me, that's a little bit more wild. And then the third one that people miss is no variation. 
uh, the late John McKeon talked about this a lot, where no variation. I'm going to do two sets of five and the five basic movements from now on, and I'm not going to vary those uh, movements at all. John added another level, which still made you keep the same loads too. Every day, the same exact load. Now, he used, you know, bands, and I would probably use chains and mentally try to really go faster in every one of the lifts. And by the way, this will be the next question uh, on today's podcast. Uh, and I, I thought there was great wisdom in that. Would I do that? Oh, I don't know. But I like the idea. Uh, I came up, somebody asked me about this one time, and I came up with a, a, a real simple training program. Now, you would have to use like the bigger, faster, stronger chains because the chain on bigger, faster, stronger is also a collar. So let's just say you're going to, I'm going to incline bench press 185 pounds, 85 kilos. Uh, for two sets of five for, you know, 40 workouts. Well, I would just put the chains on there and concentrate on moving that weight as fast as I could and uh, accelerate. Front squats would probably work really well with this with chains. I would say thick bar deadlifts would shockingly work well on this. Uh, I got to tell you, I think chin-ups and the ab wheel. So here's your workout. A press variation with chains, uh, a pull-up chin-up variation, uh, front squat with chains, ab wheel, that's pretty good, yeah, perfect, but it's pretty good, and then maybe, I don't know, uh, if you can f either swings to warm up or uh, a deadlift or whatever you think you need, it's a good question, it's a good question, uh, and, and I want to kind of challenge you uh, with the way I answer this, is that, um, in, in the book, Easy Strength Omni book, I, I go into variations quite a bit, but the problem most people have is they never stick to something long enough to have to break through those thresholds. You just need to go on any form with any of the programs that say follow the program. Go to a place that the answer to any question is follow the program, and you'll start to get a sense of how many people, when they hit that roadblock of load or reps, you know, don't want to do anything to think around it themselves. And what I've always learned in my career is that by by challenging myself to come up with my own solutions, good things tend to happen and not bad. Uh, Bill has a question. What is your opinion on speed when lifting? I had to think about what you meant by speed for a second because when I was young, that had a different meaning. Do fast reps do anything different than slow reps? And should I aim to incorporate speed reps into my training or uh, solely focus on the load in effort? Bill, from what I've been told, just thinking about going fast actually helps. Uh, I'm an Olympic lifter, so speed is important. I'm a discus thrower. Speed is important. Controlled speed. Constant acceleration is important. So for me, I, yes, I think speed on the bar is something very helpful. Uh, it's in, this, this is why I like today's question so much. Um, this is These are my journals from 1989, 1990, 1990 early 1991. And uh, the argument in these years before the internet showed up and everybody come, became an expert is that you really did want to go fast, really wanted to go fast. Uh, yeah, with when you're moving the barbell. And it, it was supposed to help out a lot too. Um, so I would say yes, I think it helps to think speed. Uh, when I was at the Olympic Training Center, I remember one of our great uh, weightlifters, he just told me, every time you touch a bar, you want to blow it up as fast as you physically can. And uh, he was a great, he was a great lifter, one of our best in American history. And uh, I, I, I didn't like the way he warmed up, but you can't argue with his performance. Now, he did have a lot of extremely ugly clean recoveries. Uh, he missed a lot of snatches. And, and, I, and, and I think because he never learned tempo, uh, that's my opinion. I'll shut right up right now. Uh, but there is, yeah, I think speed is a good idea. We have a question from Caesar. You mentioned the importance of focusing on the gluten hips for elite performance, body part focus number one, and you gave us some exercises to that effect. Hip thrusts, clamshells, squats, 
Deadlift swings, snatches, cleans, prowlers, sled pulls on hill sprints. That's pretty good. My question is, what would be body part focus number two or even number three? We'll just stick with two for this time. You'll have to, you will have to answer three some other time. And how would you organize them into a training program, perhaps three days a week? Also, earlier on the podcast, you mentioned that little and often on the long haul also applies to fat loss. So I wonder if this could be interpreted as the opposite to intermittent fasting by eating small amounts every four hours or so. What do you think? Eh, I'm not a big fan of uh, eating every few hours anymore. Used to be. Uh, my fat loss knowledge comes from uh, Clarence Bass. Here's his whole collection of books right here. And the number one thing I've learned from Clarence Bass is, well, so Art Devaney said it probably best and everyone wanted to kill him for saying it. Question, what's the best way to lose body fat? Answer, don't put it on in the first place. Clarence's idea is this. It's very difficult to lose a pound, uh, 0.5 kilos of body fat. Very hard to lose it. So when you lose it, keep it off. And to lose it, it might take, it would take him up to three weeks in some cases. I love the one story he has about getting ready for a, a, a shoot, a photo shoot. And he said to himself, my God, I got a call. We need you to do this in three weeks, not six weeks. Holy cow. So what he did, he eliminated one piece of bread every day and added 15 minutes to his walk and lost the pound of body fat easily. And I look back on that. And to me, um, that's how you do things. It's going to take a while to lose body fat, as I've discovered in my life. Biggest mistake ever I ever did was listen to those idiots who told me to do high rep back uh, to do heavy back squats and eat more carbs. My body hated it. I, it hurt me. It made me fat. Probably made me stupid. And uh, I've been dealing with that since I did it, and I had nothing but regrets. Now, getting back to your, the real question I want to answer of yours is the body part focus number two. Dr. Mark Chang told me when I first met him that the Chinese medicine, they call it the four knots. The hips and the shoulders are the four knots. And they want to be loose enough to untie and tight enough to stay together, just like your shoelace knots. And I thought that was brilliant, and I still do. So we, body part number one, that's your hips and butt. So that is all the things you said. Hip thrust, clamshell squat, deadlift swing, snatch, clean, prowler, sled pull, and hill sprint. Body part number focus number two is right here. And the answer in my world would be press, 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 press. Uh, Roy Kent, press, you know, uh, press, press. Uh, single arm press, double arm press, military press, 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 press. press. And then the other thing we'd be doing, vertical pulls, pull-ups, chin-ups, whatever you can do. Now, somebody's always going to say, what about rows? Well, the problem is most people, when I look at them doing rows, it's uh, it's Olympic, it's explosive, jumping, crap, hurting your lower back, crap, crap. And they're, they're brutal. And then someone's going to say, what about that machine at the gym? Well, good. You are at a gym with a machine. Good for you. Use that. That's perfect. But for the rest of us, press, pull up, press, chin up, uh, press, 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 pull up, pull up, pull up. Um, yeah, there's other stuff, sure. Uh, I like suspension trainer work. I like the T's, the Y's, the I's. I like doing uh, push-ups on those parallettes. I like doing dips. I like this. I like that. Shoulders and hips. Get yourself, get yourself as strong in the vertical press as you possibly can and get your glutes through the roof and you'll be a happy, happy person and you'll look good, you'll feel good, you'll perform very, very well and I think you'll be a happy camper. Yeah, so um, as for a training program, you can see why I love the Olympic lifts. I mean, go back to the original Olympic lifts. Clean, press, squat, snatch, clean and jerk. I mean, you just... It was glutes, glutes, glutes. I mean, even look at the power lift, uh, you know, uh, you know, squat, bench, deadlift. It's the same thing. And that's why people get away from those sports and they try to, you know, they come up with all these idiot hybrid sports. I'm the best at, you know, whatever, you know. Uh, I, 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 I jogged a mile in 14 minutes and I did three pull-ups. Aren't a swell boy I am. Yeah, you did, yeah, you did crappy mixed with crappy. Now, go to a powerlifting week, put the weight on the floor, 
deadlift, and that's we'll find out how strong you are. Uh, hats off to my friend Steve Friedis right there, by the way. He just pulled a massive deadlift at a very, very small dead, uh, body weight. Um, if you can clean and press and snatch uh, body weight over your head, you're strong. I don't care who you are or where you are. So you can see why I think the Olympic lifts and the power lifts are so good. You can probably see why I think the kettlebell work is so good because the swing, the snatch, the press work, it's its all training this stuff. And of course, the brilliant goblin squat. And a good question. I, I like that. And if you want to follow up on that, get ask again. I'm not sure I'm going to have something as important as the hips and shoulders, but uh, I need a few weeks to think about it, okay? Oh, and by the way, the way I teach uh, the area between... So here's your four knots, and I teach this as being a chain link fence. This is just a chain link fence. It's very strong, very flexible. And that's that's kind of this image I'm using. Okay, I'll keep going because you know, well, I'm on. Uh, and then with the knees, I teach it like from my friend Bike James. I got this. The knees are like uh, mountain bike wheels. You know, you lean into turns, and the hands and the feet are mini tramps. So my perfect human being would be mini tramps on the feet and hands, uh, uh, mountain bike tires for the knees, four knots and chain link. And there you go. That's that's there's my there's my perfect athlete. Maybe I need to spend more time uh, working with androids and robots or something. Wow, that uh, that was great. Uh, I really um, I really enjoyed these questions this week. Uh, you know, as I'm sitting back here, I just see a connection because I, when we talk about elite performance, I think you need a training journal. I think you need loaded carries. Um, the question Michael had about how many days a week, I'd say, I remember I said three and do everything if you can. Obviously, if you're going to be elite performing, you got to do more just because you have to. Um, we talked about variations. We talked about speed. And then finally, we talked about, you know, what to focus on. So really, for performance, my answer is just listen to this week's uh, uh, podcast and put together all my nonsense and try to figure it out. I enjoyed that. Hey, listen, that's it for this week. Remember, if you have questions, podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. I'll do my best every week to answer each and every question. And thanks so much for listening. And remember, until next time, keep on lifting and learning. Thank you.